Hi, this is Drew with the Daniels Ag Services and today in the Wilkins Ag Wire Risk Management Series we're gonna stick with the most very basic question that you could ask and that is what is a hedge? So we're not gonna go over any examples on specific hedge strategies or what have you. We're just gonna go through a couple of examples here on what is a hedge and what isn't a hedge. Uh, a lot of times you'll be talking with someone that has an interest in hedging um, or just someone that wants to talk about the markets in general and you'll mention hedging and it almost comes off as a little bit of a dirty word. They know someone that got burned hedging in the past or margin calls, things like that, what have you. Uh, and you'll commonly hear phrases like, I'm not looking to add to my risk. I've already got enough out in the field um, when you're talking to a producer. And that's one of the common um, misunderstandings as far as when it comes to hedging, because the markets were invented actually to hedge and a hedge is something that reduces your risk. So there are two types of participants in the futures and options markets. There's hedgers and then there's speculators as noted, the market was created for hedgers as a way to have different delivery times for their commodities. That way you didn't have to deliver them all when they came out of the field. Um, and they were also done that way you could price in the future and offset the risk for future delivery. So um, as a way to try and make money, speculators came into the market and they assumed that risk. So a good rule of thumb as we go through this and we go through some different scenarios here is hedgers are looking to reduce risk while speculators are looking to add risk. So if you're ever wondering whether something that you're doing is a hedge or not, just ask yourself, am I reducing my overall risk by doing this or am I adding to it? Reducing, hedge, adding, speculator. So over here, I've got a couple examples that we're gonna go through to kind of give you an idea over what is a hedge and what isn't. We're gonna take it back to elementary school where you draw a line to whatever you think is the answer and the teacher would grade it and let you know if you're right or wrong. So I am the teacher here, so we'll get every one of them right, but play with me on the, the computer here and we'll see how we get. So a farmer selling corn futures, would that be a hedge or not a hedge? That would be a hedge. So we're protecting against an adverse price movement here. So if a farmer is intrinsically long the corn market, if he's growing corn, or if he has some in the bin, he makes more money when the price goes up. An adverse price movement would be corn prices falling. Selling corn futures would mean that he would be making money in his futures account to offset the losses that he would be experiencing in the actual physical commodity that he's holding. As such, it's a hedge. It's protecting him against an adverse price movement, which is essentially what a hedge is all about. You're trying to protect yourself from an adverse price movement. In this case, the physical corn that you own, the price going down, would be offset by selling the corn futures. So that's a hedge. So let's go airline buying wheat futures. That is not a hedge. Many airlines that I follow don't have any business participate in the wheat market. There's not any biofuels out there for wheat that airlines are using as far as I know. Um, so them doing that would be a speculative move. They would not have any, there's not an adverse price movement that the wheat market could have that would affect their cost of doing business. So that would strictly be a speculative play and not a hedge for them. What about a dentist buying silver? That would be a hedge. Fillings come from silver. Now, granted, that would be a huge dentist to need to buy the amount of silver that a futures contract offers, but dentist needs silver for fillings. And, you know, if, if, price of silver skyrockets, obviously that's an adverse price move, uh, movement for them because they're going to have to be buying silver for their fillings at a higher price. Whereas if they're long silver futures, they're going to be making up that difference in the futures market. So they're protecting themselves from an adverse price movement. Therefore, it's a hedge. What about car insurance? Car insurance is a hedge. If you get in a wreck, obviously your car insurance will cover you. Um, whatever vehicle you hit as well, unless it's a, unless it's a single car accident, you'll be, you'll be covered. So it's protecting you from an adverse price movement of potentially uh, repairs or having to buy a whole new car. And that's what your insurance does, is gives you the ability to not pay the, all that out of pocket. 
That's why you pay that premium. So you're protecting yourself from an adverse price movement. So it's a hedge. What about uh, an investor selling S&P futures? Um, that would be a hedge. So let's say you've got a, an investment portfolio full of stocks or whatever, and you're worried that the, the price of the bundle of stocks that you have or whatnot could go down, and you wanna protect against that. Well, selling the S&P futures will appreciate in value if the stock market goes down, the S&P goes down, so you're protecting yourself against an adverse price movement there. So that is a hedge. And last but not least, a farmer buying copper futures. You can probably figure that out by now, but that is not a hedge. Um, that would be done strictly on a speculative basis. I don't know many cop, uh, copper farmers out there that would need to be shorting or buying that market in order to take a position. So uh, that basically covers what a hedge is. We went through some examples here. Hopefully they all made sense. If they didn't, just give me a call. I'll be happy to talk to you about it on the phone. Got a lot of qualified people here at Daniel's Ag Services, uh, including myself, that can help you understand what a hedge is, what a hedge isn't, and how it can help protect you and your operation from adverse price movements. So again, this is, this is example purposes only. Obviously, we didn't get any of the hedging strategies. If you wanna see some specific hedging strategies, we've got videos um, on our Daniel's Ag Services, Daniel's Trading, and YouTube page. So you can check out those. We get to some specific hedging examples. That way you can figure out what you need to hedge, and those will teach you how to hedge it. So if you've got any questions, let us know. Otherwise, have a great day, and we'll see you next time. This material is conveyed as a solicitation for entering into a derivatives transaction. This material has been prepared by a Daniels Trading Broker who provides research market commentary and trade recommendations as part of his or her solicitation for accounts and solicitation for trades. Daniels Trading, its principals, brokers, and employees may trade in derivatives for their own accounts or for the accounts of others. Due to various factors such as risk tolerance, margin requirements, trading objectives, short-term versus long-term strategies, technical versus fundamental market analysis, and other factors, such trading may result in the initiation or liquidation of positions that are different from or contrary to the opinions and recommendations contained therein. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future performance. The risk of loss in trading futures contracts or commodity options can be substantial, and therefore investors should understand the risks involved in taking leveraged positions and must assume responsibility for the risks associated with such investments and for their results. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your circumstances and financial resources. You should read the risk disclosure accessed at www www.danielstrading.com. Daniels Trading is not affiliated with, nor does it endorse any trading system, newsletter, or similar service. Daniels Trading does not guarantee or verify any performance claims made by such systems or services.